okay so let's start with this session so uh, basically uh, first when we install this l point what we required so as the name suggests it's identity iq right so basically it is working on identities or it is always means the action will be always taken on identity so first aim is to lower the identity okay so first is identity cube overview then how we can load the uh, identities inside the cell point so there is one way is loading a identity through the authoritative application okay so next is authoritative application configuration then identity mapping so identity is mapping uh, mapping is something like whatever the attributes are there in authority application or maybe another application we can map with those with those means map those attributes with the identity uh, attributes okay so that is identity mapping then next is the aggregation and refresh so aggregation basically reads the data from target application and refresh will recalculate the data of identity okay and then identity iq user access management so next is how exactly we can manage the users within the identity iq okay so that is a topic that we uh, i'm going to cover okay so now first starting with the identity cube so what exactly the identity cube is so identity uh, we can assume it a normal user so or virtual representation of the user in sale point okay basically now you have a user with you now it is surrounded with some details like identity attribute basically a job title department country code and so and so forth okay so those are the attributes which is available okay with the user along with that he, uh, user has application accesses and entitlement accesses then previous history that previously user does not have this particular application access now this user has application access so all the details uh, which is surrounding uh, surrounding the user okay so or for the user that is whole called identity cube okay so it's something identity is available and inside the cube all the details or all the identity attributes are available okay and identity cube also access the user interface okay ui he can go and he can access it so that is basically called identity cube so we can assume that one user is equal to one identity cube in sale point okay now next is we know about the identity cube but now the main our first task is how to create a identity cube uh, within the sale point identity iq okay so basically there are two mechanism to create the identity cube one is loading a user from other application okay so that is the first scenario and second scenario is uh, creating a uh, uh, creating a user within the sale point okay manually by raising the request or maybe uh, maybe someone will go and raise the request on behalf of the user so that is the first thing or uh, user can also directly do the self registration process okay so these are the two way that we are going to uh, uh, cover uh, in modules okay so this first way loading the uh, data or loading the account from other application that i am going to show you uh, today only but this use uh, manually using the life cycle manager we will study in net next modules so first how we can load the data or how we can create the user within the identity iq so inside first automatically through the account aggregation so account aggregation now you know we are loading the data from target application to the sale point okay so here in this two point we are loading the data okay from the another application basically so there are two type of application available for the sale point identity iq one is a authoritative another one is a non authoritative okay so what is authoritative so authoritative is something uh, 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 application on which sale point completely trust on it okay but non authoritative is sale point cannot completely trust on it to populate the identity attributes okay so this is trustable we can say or whatever the records are there that we can go and we can read it okay and we can create the identity queue another one is non authoritative is something uh, interest kind of thing okay 
they, there it, the data is available for user but user is not available in sale point so do i need to create or i just need to get get the information and then manually correlate kind of stuff will be there for non authority so sometimes whatever the data or whatever the users records are coming from authority we always trust and we always uh, create identity on based, based on that but for non authority whenever we got the user detail okay so we will pull that data inside the sale point and we will uh, just keep it as it is some admin sale point admin team can go and can check that whether this account should be created or not okay and based on that manual action will be taken care by the admin okay now so uh, yeah so two things are there okay so here mainly if account not matched to the authority cube so previously authority cube has created one account and the new account which is loaded from non authority cube is not matching with the existing authority account then it will go and it will create the non authority cube okay uh, and which is a manual I means sometimes we can go and we can manually correlate with the identity or uh, it may it might be a new identity so we need to create a new identity okay now next is manual definitely uh, using the create identity so there is a form present within this sale point where we can go and we can just fill the form and when we hit the submit it will go for the approval once approval is completed new identity will be created okay and second thing self registration option is available so when when we try to hit the sale point link so during the login uh, user can directly self register himself or herself okay to create the identity so again the form will be populated user will enter the detail and the form uh, and the user will be created after the approval but this is not an ideal process to do okay self registration so no organization or no company follows the same so can, that can is you give some examples for authoritative and non authoritative yeah, yeah so that we are going to study in next module okay so don't worry so this is just a brief on on top of this okay, okay. so authority one we are going to study today only uh, non authority one maybe in couple of session we will going to study okay so this is just a brief uh, how exactly we can create the user in say in sale point okay now as i mentioned uh, uh, we can create this particular uh, user through the authoritative application or non authoritative application so how exactly we can create the user okay so first thing first initial configuration is we need to configure the authoritative application okay so basically that is first thing second thing once the application is configured we need to configure the identity attribute based on the authoritative application attribute let's say we have a hrms system or maybe active directory system where we get the first name last name of the user okay so what we need to do is in sale point also we have a first name and last name so we just need to go and we just need to map it somewhere so that whenever we get the data from the authoritative application it will directly populate inside the identity attributes also within a sale point okay so so this thing is identity mapping what we are going to do uh, to get the user detail okay and once this two is configured next is just define define and run the aggregation task okay so we just need to go and we just need to define the task okay this this task is aggregation task and just run it so once we run it it will load the data okay it will load the data from the authority application and it will create the authority cube okay so once it is created we will have a proper data available with us with the for the user now next is we need to run the default refresh task okay so there is a refresh task present that refresh task we need to run after the aggregation task to populate the identity attribute and mark the managers so when the identity is created okay through this process so it has some basic data which is uh, which have a direct mapping but the calculated data uh, let's say uh, uh, we are calculating something on based on some uh, based on some attribute of our application then we need to load the data okay so first we are loading the data but it will not store in identity attributes so to calculate something or to mark a manager that this manager is for this particular user so for those we need to run the refresh task so this is a final step once we run the refresh task identity will be created in system okay now 
next is your question okay so how we can configure the application authoritative application so it is not related to the authority application this is also related to the any application which we are onboarding in sill point okay so this is something when we onboard the application there are two things available one is a connector and another one is the application so connector is something before hitting the cell point whatever the thing we are doing that is done through the connector okay so there must be one connector present which will use the connection parameter which we passed okay which we pass in the application configuration which will connect to this target application and load the account in cell point okay so once cell point account cell point account will be loaded then the application uh, uh, application will be executed okay so application or basically aggregation within the application will be executed so what exactly the application is so application is nothing but the representation of a target so uh, resources so let's say active directory app jdbc csv and so and so forth so those are the application okay so that application representation is must be available in uh, cell point also to load the data okay next thing configuration includes something name description owner revoker so these details we need to write okay account schema optional group schema then uh, connector details so connector details is here and then application rules so that uh, i am going to show you but yeah definitely we require these details for the application next is connector so connector is basically a reading or writing a data uh, on third party application which is integrated okay so it's a software component to connect to a target resource okay and read and write the data on the target system or maybe in cell point identity iq then so, some configuration includes you know means I, I already mentioned connection specific data like host name port name url authentication data etc okay and connector rules is data manipulation so whenever we are loading the data from a, a particular third party application so before the data hits to the uh, uh, cell point okay uh, uh, cell point if we want to manipulate any data we can do it using the connector rules okay so we can write the business logic on top of this so whatever the data we require in whatever format we can do it using this connector rule and next is provides the normalized uh, resource object so basically uh, when a cell point reads the data from the target application it will always read in resource object format okay so connector connector will always convert the whatever data coming from the target application in into the resource object and then cell point will use that resource object to uh, load inside the cell point okay so it will provide the resource object basically normalize resource object to the cell point so that is a connector task now this is something a HRMS or HR system application uh, which is there. So let me just go through the directly to the cell point. Okay. And then I will explain you. Okay. Now uh, just let, let's let assume that we are going to create one authority application uh, within the cell point. Okay. So I have created this delimited file uh, 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 application. Uh, to create the users so this is my hr system okay so just assume that we I means in company we have a hrms system or hrms tool uh, once all the approval is done uh, the hr system or hr will create the user okay and from that particular system we are pulling the data in csv file okay delimited file basically and we are storing it somewhere in some server and then from there cell point is loading the data so this is a kind of same example so I'm giving this delimited file example as the authority one. So in the HR data, what we are getting is username, first name, last name, email ID of the user, display name, employee ID, then manager of the user, job title and country. Okay. So this detail we are getting from the target application. Okay. And this is my target application we can consider as, and we can load this particular target application. So this is basically a HR system. Let's just consider it now. If we have a HRMS, we have a direct connector available. If we have a workday, we have a direct connector available. Okay, so we can just use those connector. So it will directly connect to the third party application and it will load the data. Okay, so basically this is the application uh, that is HR application that I'm going to load. 
okay so here you can see this is the details available for the user now next thing so to load the data from the hr or any of the application what we need to do is first we need to go to application and then application definition so here you can see this error okay no authoritative application defined in the system all identity marks will be uncorrelated so basically authoritative application is not available that's why identity will, uh, will be marked as uncorrelated so what we can do uh, to create so first when we start onboarding any application we need to click on this add new application so it will show one form where a developer or implementer needs to enter the data so let me just enter the hr system as a name so first we need to enter the name of the application so this name is no means nothing to correlate with the target application name or nothing but this name will be used in a sale point okay for to show that particular application details so we need to give a proper naming convention so that we can easily understand okay this particular detail is for this particular application okay so i am just writing hr system then we need to select the owner okay so owner uh, basically uh, any user or any group of a user okay uh, that that will be owner of this application so maybe this owner we can use it later purpose while approving approving or denying denying the access we require to configure some owner so it, at that time we can use the application owner as a approver or rejecter even we can use as a access review guy so we need to select proper owner here but if this owner will not be means this owner does means no need to take any action by this owner in the application then we can define any of the user okay so there is no impact next is this is the application type okay so inside the application type we can select any application type which is required so let's say i am just giving one example active directory so if we are integrating the active directory we can select this active directory hyphen direct as a connector okay similarly we have another connectors also if we if we are if we are assigning access to the go to meeting so we can use this go to meeting also means we can select that go to meeting then whatever so here you can see the different type of a ldap is there then linux direct access is there mainframe is there and so and so forth sharepoint online access sharepoint server access is there right so even my sql or microsoft sql server direct access is there oracle database is there oracle business suite is there so whatever the application you are integrating so first task we need to check whether those accesses or whether we can integrate those particular uh, application directly within the cell point okay so let's say i'm creating a workday account then we can select this workday as a connector so when we connect let me just connect to one of the application uh, let me just go to uh, or active directory okay? because every time we are using this active directory so when i select this active directory so new tabs will be appear okay so configuration risk active data sources and so and so forth okay so based on this application type this particular tabs are automatically configured so if you see here in configuration so in the configuration now it is asking for a active directory direct configuration so where we are going to write the uh, iiq service host name port name and so and so forth then domain configuration or forest configuration we are, go are going to write it here so this detail we are gen uh, we generally got from the application team who is handling the active directory or maybe a specific application okay so this detail we need to ask to connect to the application okay and then what account we need to aggregate what group we need to aggregate so this particular screen will be changed based on the uh, application type okay similarly rules will be changed these rules will be changed based on the application type okay correlation mostly will be common to all but for one of one or two types it will be changed so mainly we need to focus on one two and three tab this is something uh, will automatically populate uh, based on the application data okay so we no need to configure this this will automatically populate okay and last is password policy if your application uses the password okay so we can define the password policy for individual application let's say what is the password policy so password policy is something eight character must be there uh, one special character uh, should be there one uh, uh, means 
lower lower digit is all oh, sorry lower alphabetics is also there higher i mean uh, then one digit should be there so those are the configuration okay that if we want to do then we can just create a new policy and we can add it okay so that is there uh, so this particular thing these steps will be displayed based on the application type what we are going to select but in our case uh, we are going with the delimited file for the hr right so we require the delimited uh, connector so let me just go and let me just select the delimited one so the page will be refreshed and this particular tab will be changed see previously we have untrusted something is present now it is removed so these tabs or these values or whatever the forms it will show it will change according to the our application type okay now after the application type we have this description we can write anything this is a hrms system i think we can write it we can make it as a authoritative so whatever description we want to give we can give it this this is just for a admin or implementer purpose okay so there is no other meaning of description then this is something revoker if uh, uh, something it's revokes automatically then if we want to send that particular approver to the revoker we can select the user here okay similarly proxy application and proxy uh, profile class so this is related to the uh, application so if this particular application uses any proxy application we can select the application first we need to configure that proxy application and then we need to select this and profile class is something if it is hitting any java classes java classes we just need to mention the java class path here okay so it will load but generally we are not using these two parameter even revoker also we are not using but some organization very rare organization uses this revoker because revocation process should be automatically so that once user leaves or once user remove the access it should go and it should immediately remove it if we put the approver then uh, that is completely depend on approver so revoker generally no organizations are using it okay then we have an authoritative application so authoritative application and non-authoritative application i already told you so if your application is authoritative we need to select it if it is non-authoritative just make it unselected okay so uh, this is my hrms is my authoritative application so for authoritative this is something is required that's it so for authoritative and non-authoritative no difference is there except this particular selection okay then second is case insensitive so case insensitive is whatever the account we are going to create let's say uh, uh, for vasu okay so we are creating an account for vasu so sometimes some some applications are using uh, a capital vasu okay for one user so same we are going to create in sale point okay but at the same time for another user it is in small letter okay so let's say for chris it's it's in small letter so k is capital r i s h is small and we what we want in in sale point we want that okay all the accounts should be having have a capital letter or if we want to do something then if first letter is small cap, sorry capital and remaining letter small whatever the format we want to give we can keep it so in that scenario okay we can use this case insensitive to map the particular account uh, to the user okay if it is small and iga contains or cell point contains a capital letter we can uh, directly map with this case insensitive so this is required when we have a uh, uh, in application we don't have a proper form naming convention okay in that scenario we can use this case insensitive and then next is native change detection <coughs> native change detection is something native is where the data is lying so the data is lying on application right so if any data is directly changing in data in uh, target application then that native change should be detected or not uh, uh, if it should be detected we need to select it if it should not be detected we need to uh, untake it okay so generally uh, uh, for main application okay we are enabling this native chain detection but remaining application we are not triggering because seal point unwantedly triggered some workflow based on the native chain detection so wherever we require audits for the application that okay someone is going to change in application and that audit i want so for that we we uh, we just enable this option okay and last is maintenance enable so maintenance enable is something if application is failing okay or application connection is failing or maybe application is uh, not up and running in that scenario we can add this maintenance uh, period okay so this is maintenance so starting from today till what time 
uh, this particular system will be in under the maintenance so just write the date let's say till tomorrow 12 o'clock so i can write it 31st then 12 then whatever the year and then timing okay and just save the application so what it will happen so whatever the task running on this particular application it will halted okay no task will be run once this maintenance period period is over then only the task will going to be executed so it will wait to complete this maintenance period okay so for that we are using this maintenance next is configuration so previously if you have seen in active directory this configuration page is different now for delimiter this configuration page is different so here what exactly we need to do is so here we need to pass the connection parameter okay so where exactly the uh, file is lying okay if any filtering or if any merging kind of options would be there then we we can write it okay so writing hr dot csv okay now next is file encoding if any particular file encoding format is there we can specify it here but for currently we don't have any and generally if we don't specify uh, file encoding so normal file encoding format will be automatically read read by this particular cell point uh, 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 delimited file uh, connector okay so there is no issue on top of that then parsing type so in the delimited files so this is within delimited file okay so one more thing i forgot so this is file transport so file transport is something if where exactly the my file will be stored it is in local it is in ftp or, or sorry we need to do ftp to connect to, to to get the file or we need to do scp so based on that we can select but currently my file is in local so i have selected the local and then parsing type so now we are coming within the file so how exactly the data has been stored in uh, file okay so here if you see my file has a data with a comma separated value right username then comma then first name then comma then last name right so here i need to specify the delimited okay yes my parsing type is delimited so i need to just write the delimited here if some regular expression is there let's say i ha i am having a separated called comma equal to hyphen something okay so i can just write the regular expression here how exactly i need to segregate my data okay so currently i am having a delimiter i am just adding the comma here okay so this uh, comma i have added here now next is file has a column header on first line if so here if you see the first line is our column header right so this is indicating the headers so that i need to select here okay and then what we need to do let's assume that we have a 10 field here okay i'm not sure how many field but 10 field here but the next line user line contains nine field okay so whether that particular nine so here the data is not proper in a sync right because this is 10 field this is nine so on that we need to fail fail the uh fail it or we need to read those nine and we need to store those first nine to the user okay and similarly if it is next line having a 11 character so what exactly we need to do last we need to ignore it or we need to fail it so if we say it's fail it will go and it will fail it okay and if we say no no fail then it will uh, read it in way in proper way okay this column is something names we need to enter okay while parsing the file if we are using the regular expression so what exactly the columns names are so if you see here when i select the regular i don't have an option of header right <clears throat> so in that scenario i need to write the column name here the name com name enter first name so this is my column name okay but in delimited we can directly give this option okay that this particular first we can use it as so let me just do the test connection so it is giving me an error called retrieving a file system was successful but there is a failure object okay the account schema does not have any attribute so here it is saying that this particular thing i can read it okay i can read it file is present but i don't have any account schema so where exactly i need to map okay which attribute i need to uh, read kind of thing is not available okay so we need to so whatever the details are here let's say use the name first name last name email we need to store it somewhere so that this particular connector will understand okay so that thing we can do it here if you come to the account you can see this 
okay this particular so object type is account is basically a loading a account schema or what exactly the attributes are available so here if you see the details in details we have identity attribute so identity attribute is something a unique value okay so unique value what is a unique value here that we can consider so here the unique value i have provided as username display attribute is what exactly we need to display uh, as a display attribute in sale point so some can use the first name some can use the display name some can use the uh, username also okay so based on that we can also use the display attribute here an instance attribute is let's say we have a two to three instance of the same application okay so which attribute we need to use for each and every instance so that we can mention okay to, to merge it and this particular thing is attributes so what are the different attributes we are going to load now here if you say if you see this line retrieving the file stream was successful that means the file reading is successful so whatever the whatever the this particular attributes are present in the file if we directly want to get it okay we no need to enter it then we can just click on this discover schema okay so it will go it will connect to the, that particular file and it will consider the first line as a header and uh, by separating with the comma whatever the data we have entered it will directly pull it okay so if you see this data i have pulled so here if you see username first name last name email display name all will be there okay so here if you see i i uh, intentionally uh, write the long wrong spelling okay display so means i write it display in wrong but then later i i assume that okay let it be why because i want to just see it that proper data will be loaded whatever you have stored as a header okay same same as it is it will be loaded okay so the data will be there whatever is available so if i want to add one more field okay so i can click on add new schema i can write the detail here let's say i am adding a department okay i'm adding just department here and just save it okay so once you save it the department will also be there but if i don't want to write it required it then just click on the delete schema okay so once you delete uh, the proper uh, data will be there if you miss means we we create a mess here and if we want a fresh again we can click on discover schema so it will populate all the field which is present now let me just consider i'm considering the uh, identity attribute so identity attribute should be a unique okay uh, for each and every user it should not be uh, mapped with the any other user okay so that should be unique and then display attribute maybe i can use the display name or username but i am going with the username so just entering the same okay now let me just click on preview so pre what we preview will do it will try to pull first 10 data of a of the uh, from the target system okay so when i click on preview it will show me the first 10 record okay so username username coming first the reason is we have uh, uh, used this username as identity attribute and display attribute so it is coming twice that is fine and then first name last name so let's just compare one of the uh, one of the uh, record so if you see first record is tab uh, tribute j tribute j first name is john last name is tribute so let's just consider same thing tribute j then first name is john and last name is uh, attribute similarly email id dis display name employee id something so email id display name employee id manager job title etc is there okay so same thing whatever is here same will be loaded here so now we can see okay preview is present now let me just go to setting again let me just click the test connection now okay now it will say this is successful because sell point will able to load, uh, read the data from the target application so it is saying successful okay so this is schema what we need to define now next is provisioning policy so provisioning policy is used to provision the data from sell point to the target application okay so from sell point what we need to provision in hrms nothing just this particular application will be used for a read purpose right so nothing is provisioned so we no need to define anything here okay if we are going to write something then we might define okay it is not compulsory to define we might define the policies here okay so that i will show you when we are writing the data in target application then next is correlation so correlation is two things so account correlation is there so what exactly the account correlation if 
whatever the attribute name i have written here as an identity attribute okay this that is not sufficient to correlate a user account which is present here in the target application this account is not correlated with the uh, identity account identity means sale point identity warehouse if i will go in identity warehouse whatever the user is there if it is not able to map it then we can do the extra configuration here okay so we can just click on edit we can say okay uh, application attribute is not there i need to save it before uh, let me just save this so if i will save okay so my application will be created and this application is authoritative so that warning will be not present now warning is not present now so let me just open the application again let me just go to correlation now let's say i want to create a new correlation that okay i don't want to i don't want to map with this particular uh, uh, mapping okay uh, username mapping i want to correlate with the display name so which is not ideal but just to show you how exactly we can do so we, what we can do uh, we, we have started this particular wizard so just click on next enter the name of configuration let's say i am giving a name called hr okay correlation hr correlation configuration something okay so whatever the name so i'm not going to save this i'm just showing you okay so then you can click next next now here you need to select okay you don't want to correlate with the username then what you need to correlate i want to correlate display name with the identity display name okay so this is my identity attributes this is my application attribute once you say okay then add it okay once you add it it will show like this now what you need to next and then save okay if any other the configuration is there you can do it and then save okay so once you save it will say okay these details are there okay so this i need to just save it so once you save it will be automatically selected okay so this mapping i have done so using the display name display name i need to i need to correlate the account correlate means i need to search with the uh, application display name and i want to search with the identity display name if both matches i need to correlate it so if we want to use for that purpose means extra other than this schema attribute identity attribute then we can use it okay but currently we don't require it because username is unique in our case and we want to store it now next is manager correlation so how we can identify who is a manager so if you see here manager i have added as sp admin for first user for another user i have added the tribute j means this is the user so i want to say that okay for samir days pande my uh, uh, my manager is john tribute so how we can correlate so we can correlate using this tribute j because we are getting tribute j and tribute j is unique in uh, sale point or in particular application right username so we can correlate how exactly we can correlate so manager correlation is something manager of a target application is a uh, uh, name name in uh, sale point so whatever the manager name is coming we need to correlate with the name of the user okay so when we, when we find the user it will say that he is a manager of this particular account or this particular guy okay so in this way we need to do the manager so if let's say here we contains the display name which is unique field okay so display name is something john john space tribute right if we have added then here we need to do a co correlation accordingly managers would be mapped with a display name something okay so we need to select this so once the correlation is done uh, we no need to focus on account uh, risk because this will be loaded automatically when when we do the aggregation and all okay then rules so if we want to write any rule okay so we can uh, we can write a rule so this generally used for the business logic purpose so let's say uh, before loading so before loading in the sale point i i mentioned that we need to we can write the co connector rule to modify the data okay so if i want to modify the data we can write any of this rule okay so this rule uh, you guys need to go go through it what exactly these rules are okay so let me just give you the overview so pre-iterator rule is something before running any of the thing first it will go and it will run the pre-iterator rule when we do the react uh, aggregation okay so pre-iterator generally uh, uses for let's say hrms we have stored with a jeep right so we we want to unzip it so we can write a rule here first unzip the file and get the csv file okay so that we can write in pre-iterator rule 
let's say post iterator rule means once the all the thing is run by the connector rule last it will execute the post iterator let's say that file we need to archive now we don't we don't want don't want that file so we need to move to the archive folder so that will logic we can write in this particular post iterator rule okay then what it will do is it will so after pre iterator it will run the build map rule so whatever the data we are getting from the target application let's say this csv data if we want to convert it to the map in specific order okay by default it will convert to the map username equal to tribute j first name equal to john it will convert automatically but directly mapping but let's assume that i want to add one more field okay that field uh, contains full name okay so full name is nothing but the first name space last name uh, before we want we we are going to store in cell point if i want to create a full name okay so we can write the logic uh, from the map get the first name from the map get the last name so we get the first name and last name and then add add one entry in the map called uh, map dot put uh, whatever the full name is there yeah, is com means full name comma whatever the first name then add space and then last name so this is normal or logic we can write it okay so we can write a java rule or java methods only nothing else is required here okay so let me just open one of the screen <coughs> the screen will be like this only okay what we need to write it we just need to write here the rule name so uh, let me just write uh, rule hyphen i'm creating a build map so build map for which applications i'm uh, creating for hrms okay so just i'm writing so you can give any rule name so if you see here what you will get you will get the record application details and so and so forth okay and here you need to return the map so what you need to do is whatever the record we are getting just we need to read it so let's say uh, uh, i am getting the display name so just write record whatever you are writing right record dot get and then whatever the display name is there okay so display name is in application okay this is in application so i am writing the display name let me just copy it from here uh, display name so this is normal java syntax okay so i am writing and then so this will give me a display name so i am writing the string display name equal to this okay so now i am getting a display name in display name from the record now what exactly i need to do i need to just put this display name in the map okay so map by default it is available in a small format so map dot put we need to write let's say full name i am creating so full name this is my new attribute and this display name i need to put as a full name and just complete it and then just write return map okay and then just save it so this is something i have written so this is my logic which i need to implement you can add the log and all okay whatever you are adding in java and just save it so once you save it you will see that particular rule will be created here and you can select this rule okay so it will create the full name so now we have created the map so let's assume that we we are using uh, more data so what it will do it will create a uh, more more maps okay so to merge it we use the merge map rule okay so now finally we will get one map and once we get the map we can means this particular rule map to resource object rule will convert that particular map inside the resource now by default sale point has this rules available for the delimited connector it will execute it automatically and it will store in the sale point but some extra logic in, is needed on top of that okay then we can use it so pre iterator i give you the example i want to unzip the file we can do it uh, post iterator i want to archive the file i can do it build map rule if i want to change or i want to modify some attribute i can do it okay before converting map to the resource object i want to do some specific action i can do it within this rule okay so that logic we can write it now next is this particular thing is for aggregation so while aggregating once we get the resource object if we want to manipulate the resource object or if we want to correlate or create something extra we can use this rule so correlation rule is something let's just assume that i already explained you so it will correlate with this identity attribute but if it is not fine then it will correlate with this account correlation what we have written previously okay but still this two is not sufficient i want to write some logic 
okay so i can write the logic here in uh, correlation rule i will go and i will just write the logic and whenever so here we can return either the identity or identity name or identity attribute name and value so based on this it will correlate our account with the sell point identity which is available okay same thing creation rule if first time we are creating what action we need to perform or what logic we need to do we can do it here manager correlation so same thing here if it is not sufficient this correlation is not sufficient we can use this correlation also okay rule where we can go and we can write the business logic customization rule is something once we get the resource object and if we want to set something in identity iq let's say we are getting a, a deactive record from the accounts okay and if our connector is not able to handle properly then what we can do it we can set the iq disabled equal to true so it will say account is disabled then that logic we can do it here okay and manage entitlements means whatever the entitlement we are loading on that if customization needed we can do it okay so for that we can use it and last is provisioning rule so when we are going to provision the data from sale point to the target application we are going to do it using the before means using this provisioning so by default sell point provides the provisioning uh, option but if we want to modify the data before provisioning inside the target application let's say we, i want to add one more attribute or i want to add something in specific manner i can do it using the before provisioning rule so where i need to just go and change the plan whatever the plan will be created to store in and after provisioning means once the provisioning happen i want to see the task result what exactly it is there if it is this task result then change it to this one that we can do it in after provisioning rule but this uh, we don't require at all because mostly sell point has provided out of the box but something customization needed for the client then we can do it okay so basically we need to do this many configuration for each and every application okay once this is done we can just save it okay now i have saved the file everything is ready here now what is the next thing so next thing is we need to go to the so if you remember this slide uh, this slide so first we need to configure the authority application or normal application okay so i have created that authority application it is there okay it is there and if i run the test connection it is also successfully connecting so first test or first thing i have completed okay so configure authority application is completed now next what we need to configure is we need to configure the identity attribute based on this authority application so i will show you one or two okay how we can do it and remaining i will do it from my side so that we won't waste time so identity mapping definitely last time i showed you how we how we have added the country and all right same thing we need to go to global uh, setting then global setting then we have identity mappings so inside the identity mapping all the attributes are present which is related to the identity in seal point okay now let me just go to the country attribute okay so i'm going to the country because it's a first one now what exactly i need to do is whatever the attribute is there as a country in uh, application okay the same attributes should be available for this country attribute okay country value so here whatever we have loaded in application whatever country attribute we have loaded okay in correlation configuration schema whatever the country attribute here we have loaded same value whatever value this country attribute holds for the user same value we need to add it here for this country attribute okay so for that we need to do the source mapping i told you what exactly the source mapping i will tell you later so we need to do the source mapping so source mapping meaning is whatever we are getting from the source that we are considering as a identity attribute okay so here we need to do uh, add source okay when i click on add source we have a three option one is application attribute another one is application rule and third one is a global rule so what exactly this three is so application attribute is if we have a direct mapping of uh, application attribute with the identity attribute we can use this application attribute so where we will go and we will just map the application attribute with this particular identity attribute okay next is application rule so when i select the application rule it is saying that application and then rules
yeah for us it is us okay so i want to convert it to the full name so then i need to write a logic here so i need to select the hr system here i need to write a logic here okay get the applic uh, get this particular uh, link okay link is basically a account so link dot get attribute and then country then convert that country inside something to something and then whatever the final result is there i just need to return it okay so that is application rule now let's assume that we have a three application from where we can load the country okay so i need to use the global rule in that scenario i need to hard code those application name in the rule or i need to fetch something from configurable and final result whatever we will get we will return it so this will work for all the application which is present inside the uh, sale point this is for specific application rule and this is for specific attribute of specific application so i have selected the hr system here and the attribute name i need to map is country because i have a one to one mapping so i can just write application and attribute and then just add it so once you add it it will say okay source mapping is something country attribute of hrms whatever the value is there we need to store it as this particular identity country okay so this is a mapping okay similarly uh, department we don't have display name similarly we need to add the source configuration let me just go hr and then just add the display name okay and then just save it so in this way we need to do the mapping of all the attribute okay and that i will do it later so once this is done once this is done our next task is uh def define means create and run the aggregation task okay so that i will going to show you tomorrow okay, because we already are on before means late means three minute more in the time so do you guys have any question anything uh, what one quick question in the where we have a case in sense to option mm -hmm. uh, will that be used in the correlation like map yes, and definitely. yes definitely once you select that correlation option okay okay uh, once you select the co oh, sorry once you kill select the case insensitive option okay, okay. so inside the case insensitive uh, insensitive option it will always check whatever the account name is present and whatever the username is present it will directly correlate with that okay, okay. There, there is no other places that it can be used like only the, only it for matching right it, it is only for matching okay okay any other question to anyone 